is a blessing and a joy to welcome you to our worship service. Whether you're on site with us this morning or whether you join us virtually from home, you are a beloved child of God and we are grateful to have you worship with us this morning. If you are relatively new to us, first day, maybe first month or so, we would love to connect with you in whatever way possible. If you're on site this morning, we have documents and we have a little yellow card in the uh, front entryway that you can fill out your name, email, or phone number, whatever you feel comfortable sharing with us, and we'll use that information to connect with you to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and where you are on life's journey and give us a chance to share more about our mission in Christ. And the same for those online. If you're online, you can send us a message via Facebook or by email. You can go to orvalleyucc.org. You can find our email address there and send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to get to know you better and be able to answer any questions or share more information about who we are. <coughs> A few announcements about the life of our church. Uh, two weeks from this Sunday will be the first Sunday in April, and we will once again be doing our Interfaith Community Services food drive. So thank you to everyone who participated in last month's food drive. We are on pace. We are trying to uh, break 2,000 pounds. Last year we raised 1,997 pounds of food. So. <laughs> So we're, we're trying to plug your life. So any non-perishable food items, canned, uh, canned beans, canned tuna, canned meat, uh, peanut butter, if you bring peanut butter, the regular size peanut butter, they can distribute that better than maybe what you find at Costco. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email the office. We'll be happy to get you a list. Or you can look at Interfaith Community Services, and they will let you know what non-perishable items uh, they accept and we will collect and get to them. So that's in two weeks. That's April 3rd following worship. <coughs> uh, tomorrow we continue our study in the way of the cross by Joan Chittister with images and paintings of Jesus and his final moments on earth. The way of the cross is an ancient reflection of Jesus' final hours from the moment he's condemned to his death. And it's a very powerful way, especially in the season of Lent, to just take a moment and reflect on what Jesus went through, on what our call is as disciples of Christ, and what it means to follow Christ into the glorious mystery that is Easter resurrection. Tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. on Zoom, we'll be there. You can come if you have the book, don't have the book. If you haven't been to a session before or you've been to all of them, whatever, come on, join us for this very prayerful hour of deep reflection. <clears throat> and then Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., we will continue our Bible study. We are deep into the Exodus narrative. All are welcome to join, even if you have missed the previous sessions. We'd love to see you. All, both of those are on Zoom, and if you need the Zoom links, please feel free to email the office, and we will get those to you. They should also be in your weekly emails. And then Wednesday morning, uh, as long as there is sunshine, which there usually is, uh, I will be at Sabaya Coffee House, which is not very far from here, just north on Oracle from where we are. And I will be out on the patio. It is a great place and a great time. I will be there from 10 to noon. We can talk about whatever you want to, but it's just past your coffee hours, so it would be great to see you, great to catch up with you, especially as we continue to get back to live in the way we've, we've always hoped to. Those are my announcements this morning. I'm going to invite Mike Sanders, our church monitor reporter. He's got a few announcements. Morning. Good morning. Uh, two announcements. First, uh, last Sunday the church council met and uh, we discussed and then voted and then approved lifting the mask requirement for in service worship starting on uh, the 27th, March, next Sunday, March 27th. Now, <laughs> it, it was not without a lot of discussion and uh, prayer and and you know, we took into account the, uh, uh, the 
survey that that uh, that you fill out, and uh, we just feel it is time to do this. Uh, the requirement is now, if you are fully vaccinated, you do not need to wear a mask. Uh, if not, we want you to wear a mask. Um, and uh, we also, of course, have uh, remote services uh, service going on for those who don't feel comfortable coming back into the building. So again, that starts next Sunday. And my second announcement is on April the 3rd, um, we are going after, right after the church service, we are going to have a meeting, an, an informal meeting to discuss replacement of the front doors, which uh, are in dire need of replacement. And we have been given a gift um, to, for, to fund that uh, project. But we, we would like your input on the style of the door. We've been discussing uh, wood, uh, like we have now, or possibly going to a, to a glass door. So anyway, uh, we would like to get input from the congregation um, at that time. Again, it's April, April uh, the 3rd, uh, right after the church service. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And that April 3rd congregational informal meeting, uh, we are working to have that be a hybrid meeting. So if you can't be on site with us on April 3rd, we're going to attempt to have a Zoom link for you so you can participate via Zoom if you need to. So we will uh, please do look to your email communications throughout the week for that information or you can reach out to the office and the office will be happy to help you with that. <clears throat> Those are the announcements this morning. Uh, a very vibrant and lively church, as you can see, and we're moving into a new season of new life and hope, which God called us to. And even as we move, we know this in life, that as we move, even into a season of hope, <clears throat> we look to new life in God's fulfilled promise. We also know there is still life burdens and griefs. And this morning, last week, right before worship and then during worship, Jose announced to the church that we lost a long time, very beloved member of our church to breast cancer. Uh, Susan Cheevers passed away last Saturday. And this today's worship service is in dedication to her life and all the love she brought into this world, especially our, the grace that was given to have her life and her love give this church so much life and love. So in remembrance of that, as we grieve, celebrate life, and look forward to God's fulfilled promise, let's take a deep breath. And as we begin worship this morning, I know it's a little different, but we enter into a celebration of experimenting with new life. I invite you to stand as you're able and greet each other with the passing of the peace. If you get a chance, wave to the people who are watching from home. They like it. They like seeing it. The cameras are back there. Peace be with you, everyone. Keep us forever in the path as we worship. 
join together in our opening hymn. so that we may prepare our hearts for change. Let us together pray. We confess that we have not always brought forth the good truth. In the midst of chaos and frenzy, we have often lost our way. Our weakness is very Our egos are kept us from seeing our desires. Yet with you, no longer is another chance to change. There is another opportunity to bear good fruit in a world full of spoil and rotten fruits. And since this was designed on Kilio, we are called to be the change that sustains generations. Let us lean with you into this chance for transformation. Dear loved ones, hear these words of God's mercy and everlasting assurance of pardon. God's grace and mercy abounds. God is with us in the change. God's everlasting arms embrace us. Each of us is beloved, affirmed, and set free. Amen. Amen.
seek. For you my flesh pines, and my soul thirsts like the earth, parched, lifeless, and without water. My soul thirsts for you, you are God, my God. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, O oh God, my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shall for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. Susan Cheevers as we dedicate this service to her life and her mission and just the love she brought into this world. We especially lift up Jim, her widower, and her children and grandchildren as they grieve her loss and celebrate her life in this time. And we also pray for our own community who is so touched by her love as we grieve and celebrate her life. <clears throat> and we also lift up prayers today for Ukraine. Pray for the Ukrainian people, especially the millions of refugees who are now scattered throughout the world, even as far as our own shores and our own borders, seeking refuge, seeking peace in God's promise. We pray for them. We pray that they find safe passage, that they find welcome and loving arms. We also pray for all those who are still in Ukraine facing the violence day in and day out. May they be protected with God's love and care. We pray for our world leaders, that they have the wisdom and the compassion they need to navigate these terrible times, and that they find a peaceful re resolution. And we pray for the aggressors. We pray for Russia and the violence they've bestowed, and we pray for their leaders and their people. We pray that they have, that they have mercy, that they have peace at this time, and that their violent ways cease for the ways of God's compassion and love. 
Are there other prayers to be lifted up at this time? Sue. <clears throat> I can never go a Sunday without. That's Sue. okay. Um, I want to give a prayer of condolence for the Cook family. We don't know them personally, but they lost two people in a terrible biking accident yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just horrific. And I want to also pray for our dear friend Ann Alden, who we've been waiting to hear what was the outcome, and she does indeed have cancer. And uh, just, I would like to bring this up in prayer. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sue, for lifting us up. Sue lifts up first uh, the Cook family who lost two loved ones in a terrible bike accident yesterday. So prayers for them in this terrible time of shock and grief and loss. Thank you, Sue, for lifting them. And may God's compassion and healing peace be surrounding them. And we pray for Anne, uh, Sue's friend, who recently found out she does have cancer. So prayers for her at this time, prayers for the strength and the courage she needs and the healing, hopefully. Prayers for her doctors and nurses. May they have wisdom and compassion. Thank you, Sue. Other prayers to be lifted this time. Grace! <laughs> <laughs> I grace! For months and four months, I'd like to offer a prayer of gratitude for the blessing of healing for me and Richard, who shortly after I fell, fell and broke his shoulder. Oh, oh. So um, it's been a rough road, but we've, we've been blessed with healing, and we're very grateful for all of your prayers. Yeah, hey! <laughs> Can we give you a round of applause? <laughs> um, so I want to give a prayer of gratitude. Also, uh, Grace, Grace lifts up prayers of gratitude. Grace has been away from us for four months, um, healing from a broken hip. She's grateful for the healing she's experienced. Um, she also lifts up prayers for her husband, Richard, who shortly after that fell and broke his shoulder. And he's on the healing path and the mend. We are so grateful. I am, I am deeply blessed this morning, Grace, to see you. We have. We've been praying for you for so long, and you are a glimpse of resurrection this morning. So it is a blessing and, and a celebration to see you this morning, Grace. It is good to see you. If you're online, Grace calls us in the church. That's a miracle. Are there other prayers to be lifted up this morning? There are other prayers we lift up this morning. We'll go to we'll go to God in a moment of silence, lifting up these prayers as well as the ones we hold in our hearts. During this Lenten season, we've been discerning God's call. And we've been um, just listening for new ways to celebrate God, and and especially in our mission of being inclusive worshipers of God. You will notice our prayer of Jesus is a little different from the traditional prayer of Jesus. So we'll go into our moment of silence, and then we'll join collectively saying the prayer of Jesus that you see printed in your board. Let us go to God in a moment of silence. Dear God, the one who is love, the one whose love brings forth the healing peace we need, we come to you this morning because you called us. You called us to rejoice and to celebrate and to serve. God, we come to renew ourselves because as life-giving as your call is, the world and our lives are filled with great burdens, with grief, with pain, and suffering. God, especially on this day, we
we have gone to God in prayer and lifted up our needs, we now come to God lifting up our gifts, honoring and celebrating all the law of the abundance God has blessed us with in this world. Today, oh, I had it and I lost it. Today, we are, uh, this week and next week, we will be celebrating a special United Church of Christ offering called One Great Hour of Sharing. If you're on site with us, we've got envelopes by the offering basket. We also got envelopes where you got your bulletin. If you'd like to contribute to this, this is a national United Church of Christ program. And one great hour sharing, sharing goes to all kinds of needs throughout the world. One of the biggest highlights one great hour sharing goes to is disaster relief. So especially once the violence in Ukraine subsides and we know that there will be a lot to rebuild, there's a good chance the UCC will probably send people in. In the past, people sent people, the UCC sent people to Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. Um, when the hurricanes strike in Texas, South Carolina, Florida, wherever, wherever there are disasters nationally or around the world, and the UCC sends resources, sends people to help with that. One great hour of sharing is what is funding and empowering that mission work. That is just one of the many projects they do with One Great Hour of Sharing. So if you'd like to participate in this very important ministry, like I said, on site, we've got envelopes uh, in the back and next to the bulletins in the front. If you're online, you can go to orvalleyucc.org. You can find the My Offering button. And actually, instead of hitting General Fund, you can see Monthly Mission Project button. And just click that button, and we'll make sure that goes to One Great Hour of Sharing. We are also collecting uh, your gifts for the empowerment of our daily ministry in this church. And so if you feel called to share those gifts this morning, time, talent, lift them up in prayer. If you have a donation to give, you can give it in the basket in the back, either during our offering music or after service. All of your gifts go to sustain us, go to make us good stewards of this space, a worship sanctuary for all God's children, and goes to empower us to go into the world serving as Christ did. Please let us take a moment to lift up whatever gifts you have to offer this morning and join me in our invitation to the offering. As recipients of the generosity of God, let us share our generosity with each other and the community. Uh, just one word about the offertory piece. It is well with my soul. Um, you may remember we included this in the um, hymn-based service we had in January. And the story of it is well with my soul is that even though currently our soul is wounded uh, because of the pain and the loss uh, of Susan Cheever, our soul is well. It is well with my soul was Susan's request at that service. So we play it today, remembering her.
relationships with our neighbors. We dedicate these gifts. Let this offering and the works of our hands and feet be the good fruit in the world. Amen. Please, please. 
please pray with me. Dear God, the one whose word brings forth new life, even out of pain, chaos, and suffering. This morning, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will be acceptable to you, our God, our rock, and our redeemer. I can't remember exactly how long it had been, but it had been a long, long time. In hindsight, it was early on in the pandemic, but still it had been months. It had been months of one shutdown, one protocol after another. First stay at home, weather the storm. Then came, okay, if you're going to go out, only go out when absolutely necessary. Then came, if you're going to go out when it's absolutely necessary, you should wear a mask. Make sure you don't go within three, wait, no, six feet of any other human being you do not know. It had been exhausting. And hope had come, had gone, hope had come, had gone time and time again. I, at the time, was leading worship services on Thursdays to a totally empty sanctuary and a cell phone. I actually did one worship service. I swear it took me one worship, one worship service. I took, it took me three hours to record. It was awful. It was awful. What were we going to do such a terrible, terrible time. She's here this morning, Grace. <laughs> I called Grace and we started talking about ideas. And we decided a place to start, maybe a place to be safe, and to honor protocols as well as to intentionally, faithfully move in serving God and answering God's call to worship and to serve and to love. We decided to organize our first food drive. We said it would be outdoors. We said you could wear a mask. We said be distance. And we were. We were all of those things. Again, this I don't think this was more than six months into the pandemic and into all the protocols and the don't go anywhere, don't do anything reality. And I witnessed something. On that Sunday morning, after the service had been broadcast worldwide, there was a gathering. I don't know how many people, probably 30, maybe more. And they came, they came with food. They came to bring food to the unknown. They came to bring food to those most in need, those who did not have. They came especially in a time when people couldn't go to work, when people didn't know where their next paycheck was going to come from. They brought food to restock the very needed food pantry at Earth Day Community Services. And so they brought free food, food to give away. And as they did it, the joy, I'm not sure who took their mask out. I'm not sure if anybody took their mask out. In my memory, nobody took their mask out. <laughs> even though we were outdoors. The joy of people, it, mask, no mask, was abundantly clear. I just remember seeing, you know, people standing in parking lot spots over here, and people standing in these parking lot spots, going, hey, how are you? Oh my gosh! <laughs> and just the excitement, the joy, to define us, that mass and, and isolation and loneliness and suffering and loss, those weren't going to define us. They could never define us because we were people of God. We were called by God and we would be defined by one thing and one thing only, God. And God's new life and God's call to mission. That's exactly what the passage from Isaiah is about this morning. 
The passage from Isaiah should be one of the most radical things you've ever heard. And in fact, you should read this passage, Isaiah 55, 1 through 9, on your own and just think for yourself. Stop. It's intentional about how absurd the opening is. Come. Get food. Come. Get milk and wine for free. It's like a college advertisement meeting. <laughs> Come without cost. No money needed. Come to feast. Come to celebrate. This is actually written, most scholars agree this was probably written while the people were still in exile. The people were still under the foreign rule of the Babylonian Empire, the empire that had destroyed their temple, had destroyed the palace, had destroyed all of their homes to the best of their knowledge. It didn't really matter if their home was standing or not. For decades, they had been taken from their homes and they had been put in a foreign land. And they were wondering, where is God? Not only where is God, where is God's promise? That promise to David, our ancestor, to always be with us, to always give us life. Where is all of that? And the prophet today said it is coming. Said the feast is here. You just have to come. You just have to incline your ear, says God. Incline your ear to me. Listen to me. One of the most fundamental calls of God's people is in Hebrew Shema. To listen, to hear, to hear the word of God, to hear the call of God. And that's all God's asking. It's just here. Listen to me. Come. Come all who are thirsty, all who are hungry. Come to my feast and I will feed you. I will nourish you. I will give you what nourishes. I will give you what, you know, I will give you wine in addition to the milk. Uh, I will give you what brings you joy and fulfillment. I ask you one thing. I tell you one thing. And that is when you feast, you do not feast for your own sake. You do not feast for your own livelihood. You feast to be a testimony, to be a witness to the world that I am here, that I am with you, that I am providing, and I am leading. To, to nations you know not yet, you must go. Nations you not yet not know, who don't know you, will come. If all you do is go to proclaim God's feast of life. I've seen that. I saw that that Sunday morning. I saw that idea. I mean, free food. That's what we were giving. We were creating God's feast. I've seen it other times in the history of our small community. I saw it years ago in the summer of 2019 when we have a massive feast and a massive worship service. It was the most time we've had kids in a worship service in three, five, six years. I don't know how long. Uh, but when the Marshallese, when our siblings who didn't look like us, who didn't talk like us, who didn't worship like us, came and worshiped with us and feasted with us. We feasted with a nation we did not know and they did not know. That feast happened, that call, that inclining our ear to God, you know, no matter the circumstances, no matter what suffering and pain we face, it came on a Zoom call to become open and affirming. After, after months and months of dormancy and not having any conversations and not having any intentionality, we immediately picked back up God's call while we were still suffering, when we had no idea when we'd be able to remove our mask, we had no idea when we'd be able to go back to our sanctuary, we had no idea what was coming, but we stopped in the midst of it, we figured out how to use Zoom, as terrible and awful as Zoom is, you know how awful it is, we said God is calling us to feast. Not with ourselves, but with all God's children. And we did. We said to our LGBTQ community siblings, we said, you are beloved children of God. Next week, when the protocols begin to lift, we recognize that they're not fully lifted, but as they do ease and they kind of
kind of rise, and we begin to prepare ourselves. I don't know about you, I'm like a groundhog, cautious. There's been plenty of times a clergy friend of mine sent me a text message. She goes, what are you doing in this brief yet chapter of hope again? Uh, we cautiously look out of the cave and look to see sunlight. We celebrate the past. We grieve the loss. We grieve everything we've lost. We've lost a lot. We honor the struggle, the pain, the suffering we need to, because only in that context does the feast make sense. Does the full power of the feast come through if we honor our suffering and pain and struggle? We also look to remind ourselves of this call. This call from God that we must be witnesses in the world, as we have in the past, but in a new way. And in a profound way. In Isaiah, there's a subtle, drastic change. One biblical scholar points out, the covenant isn't changing. The covenant never changed. The promise of God has been the same all along. What is changing is who the covenant comes through. In this passage, it refers to David, and that's what the people are suffering. How, how do we, how do, where's the covenant? David's gone. David's house is gone. Literally and figuratively. Where is the covenant? And God says, you, you are the covenant. You are the bearers of the covenant. You will receive the covenant, and you will be empowered to share the covenant. I don't know what that looks like. It's a wild image. It's like free food everywhere. <laughs> free wine and milk on every street corner. I don't know what it looks like as we move forward to seek to expand our witness. To make sure that as we celebrate this new life, this, this return, that we make sure we pay attention to God's call to serve, to expand, to get out into the world, to make sure we are continuing to build relationships. Maybe it looks like finding out who all that free food goes to, actually meeting them. For me, and I have been invitation to you, is that even though you no longer have to wear your mask here, and I imagine in many other places you don't wear your mask, and that's good, and I'm glad, recognizing, I know I have to recognize, that there are people who still need me to wear my mask. So I can't throw my mask away, I won't throw my mask away. Because in order to serve, and serve God's people, and to be a witness to the nations, there's probably going to be a time when I might need so I can be that witness. I don't know where this call is going to lead me. I don't know where this call is going to lead our church. Let us make sure, though, that as we go to feast, as we go to celebrate God's new life and the fulfillment and the reality that the covenant has never gone anywhere, and we know that so well, that the feast we go to come to celebrate is one that empowers us to be the witnesses of God in a broken world. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able and body your spirit as we sing our closing.
As we go forth to bear good fruit, may God be with us in our hunger and thirst. May our ears be ever inclined, listening for the good news. May praises be on our lips, even in the bleakest valley, and may the God of peace equip us with every good thing to carry out God's desire for the world. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.